one of the things that has happened is that there is now a Power BI connector. Um, and the, the, I want to kind of emphasize on that is because this is no longer, I'm talking about the Power BI integration from Power, you know, Power BI. So you go ahead and have a Power BI, you create all the dashboard, you add your Power, or even a report, you add your Power Apps, and you select all the data, and then it opens up into Power Apps, you have that Power BI integration. So this is different from that. So kind of want to, you know, show you that. And, and the best way to explain it is with a demo. So what I have over here is, is already an app. It's a simple app. Uh, and in memory of Reza, I went ahead and used them as an example. Um, and what I've done over here is a few things. The app simple, it's a gallery, there's data coming in. But the key thing is what kind of data is it and where is it coming from? Because what we need to know is that the Power BI, you know, uh, direct integration works with direct query databases. So if you go ahead and bang for Power BI direct query databases, you'll get this big long list over there. Uh, but the, the big, big ones that I want to focus on or the one that I want to focus on is directly the Dataverse over here. So as you can see, I've got my Dataverse over here. But let's take a closer look at where this data versus and how is it, you know, configured, so on and so forth. So what I have over here, I'm going into my uh, Power Apps. It's in this environment, and now I'm going to go in to my Admin Center, and I want to confirm two things: is what is the version of this database, and what is the version of um, and, and and if the uh, one of the setting has been updated. So I'm going to come over here. Remember that was the environment. I'm going to click on it. And the first thing I'm looking at is right in this way. It's like, is the database version greater than 9.2? And it is. I mean, 9.2.1. So it is. There's a requirement that this direct query thing will not work if you're on a lower version. So I, now I already see I'm on a 9.2.2. As long as it's more than 9.2.1, you're good. So that's a thumbs up on that one. Now let's go and take a look at the settings. And I want to come to the settings, and I'm going to look, uh, look at the... Uh, Go to products. I'm going again looking at the features. And the next thing I want to look at is TDS. TDS stands for tabular data stream, and that is turned on. So two main things that we need to go ahead and confirm are are these two settings you know set correctly. So now that we know that, what I want to do is go ahead and actually get that data. And so that data is coming from my uh, common data service or, or from the dataverse over here. And so that's what I've gone ahead and made my connection. And all this data is coming from that. So we've gone ahead and basically done all the you know, uh, fundamental work and also make sure that everything is ready for this. Now let's take a look at the simple Power BI report that I've done. So my Power BI report was a very simple one. I went ahead and grabbed the data. And some of the some, sometimes the question has is, Daniel, how did you, you know, grab this data? And that's an, you know, a, a fair question. So if I go back again to my Power Apps over here, and I go back again into the same location for the admin center, and I go and click on the, you know, the environment, I actually get that URL. I'll show you that over here. This is the URL. It's also, the, you know, sometimes it's called as the connection, but that's the URL that I grab, and I go ahead and make that connection in my Power BI over here. So when I go over here to, you know, the transform data in the report over here, and if I go ahead and take a look at my data source settings, this is that same one, the one that I just showed you in the Power BI Admin Center, how I was able to go ahead and get that uh, connection. That's how I got it over here, right? I put it over here, got the data, and then now I'm able to go ahead and actually build that report. So I'm not going to spend any time building the report because it's as simple as what you see over here. So after I've gone ahead and published it, it is on my on the Power BI side. And then on the Power BI, I go ahead and do create a dashboard, and then the dashboard I've gone ahead and added tiles. Again, this is not new. This is all the way we have to do it, all right? So basically, all that I did was went ahead and created my dashboard, um, and I put some tiles over this. And now, let's go and grab those tiles, all right? Come over here to our insert. We go to charts. We go to the Power BI tile. And this is what you know Chuck was also showing, so I'm going to kind of elaborate a little bit more on that, is that now I've got the tile, and I'm going to go over here to my workspace, and it's in my workspace in this case. You can go ahead and you know, put this in any other workspace. Just make sure you know which workspace it is in. And now in my workspace, I've gone ahead and captured the, the, um, the dashboard over here. So in my dashboard, I've actually got this one over here, the test score. I call it the student test score. There's another one I've got, which is SQL that back in database. I've shown that in my demo. But you know, make sure that you get your correct dashboard. And then over there, you go ahead and capture your tile. Now, I didn't spend, uh, spend much time cleaning up the tile names in, my, you know, in your case. Um, you know, if you've got different types of tiles, like you know, if you've got a pie chart or if you've got a bar chart or different types of charts, go ahead and give that tile a, a name or a meaning. 
because this is what you're going to see over here. Fortunately, I know what my tile name is, but you know, kind of keep that in mind for yourself. So again, this so far everything I've done, including this over here, is not new. Like I've gone ahead, you know, you've all have done all of this. So you know, some of you may be still saying that Daniel, this is not new. Come on, go ahead and show me something really great. All right, I accept that challenge. So I'm going to come now to connectors, and I'm going to go and search for. Power BI, and voila, this is my new best friend, uh, Power BI connection. And right now it is in preview, so kind of keep that in mind. You know, when I say preview, it's one of the things is, you know, definitely play around with it, get familiar with it, but, you know, be a little careful before you go production on that because it's in preview. Uh, but preview is something I personally say, that's in preview, definitely need to play around with it and get comfortable with that. Okay, so I went ahead and got this, you know, Power BI connection done over here. Now, what I want to do is start leveraging it. So one of the things I'm going to, two things I'm going to do is when a data is saved, okay, I've gone ahead and made an entry. When it is saved, I want to go ahead and now refresh, refresh the data set. Now, I want to emphasize on that. It, the, this connection is so powerful that you're not refreshing just the report or you're not refreshing just the tile. You've got direct access to refresh that data set. And when I read that, I said that this Power BI has that, uh, the Power BI connector has that functionality. I mean, I literally had a mind blown experience on that because this was not possible before. I mean, yes, you had some workarounds. You can actually go ahead and put a trigger over there, kicks off a flow, flow would go ahead and do its magic, and then you got to return some data back saying true or false or something. But now, none of that. This is all directly inside the Power BI using the Power BI refresh data, um, data set. So let's actually just go and do it. I'm going to come over here and on select, I'm going to come in and I'm going to add the function, which is called Power BI. And that's what it is, refresh data set. So as you can take a closer look, it needs two other things. It needs the group ID and it needs the data set ID. So what are the two things and where do I get it from? Well, that's pretty simple. First of all is the, data, the group ID is directly tied to your workspace. So in my case, my workspace, if I use my workspace or you use your my workspace, it will always be ME. And you can see that directly on the URL over here. That's what it will be. But if you go ahead and start selecting any other workspaces, then you got to come over here after groups and you got to go ahead and capture this you know, uh, ID over there. So kind of keep that in mind. That is what that ID is. But that's one thing, right? Because we went ahead and now get um, the group ID, but I need to get the data set ID. Now, data set ID, you got to be real careful because sometimes people mistake that as the dashboard ID. You need directly the data set ID. And it's actually very simple to go ahead and grab that. What you want to do is uh, come straight into your Power BI over here and just click on data sets. And when you click on data sets over here, you, know, you can go ahead and know what that data set is, which is more, more than likely it's always the report name. So I'm going to say a student test, and this is the one. So the moment I click on it and I go over here and I can actually go and click on settings, I don't have to search anywhere over here. It is right up over here available. So those are now the two things that I need. Uh, what I needed, I went and got it. I'm going to come back to my Power um, Apps over here, and I'm going to put in uh, my formula, which is the data set um, group ID. It was just me. And then I need to go ahead and put in my data set ID. And there you go. Obviously, I have to put that semicolon. And after that, now that I went ahead and did a submit form, it will go ahead and refresh the data set and give me the data. So let's go and test it. All right. So I'm going to come back over here. And I'm going to go ahead and add, let's see, I'm going to say, yeah, let's put a score for me. Daniel Christian, math, uh, I scored a 95, and I'm going to go ahead and save it. Went ahead and saves, saves it directly in our CDS. I mean, the Dataverse over there is a table. It's like, hmm, something is wrong. So let's see what happened. We went and refreshed the data set because I went and got the information over here. Yeah. The tile does not refresh over here. So th there's a great trick for that. It is so simple, the trick, and I'll kind of walk you through because what's happened is that it, it, it does go ahead and refresh it on the tiles in the Power BI dashboard, actually refreshes it every five minutes over here, and it has refreshed the backend data set. But what doesn't refresh automatically is tile, this visual piece over here. It doesn't refresh that, but there's such a simple trick to it that it, I mean, it'll literally blow your mind. It's like, man, Daniel, was it that simple? And I'm answer to that is yes, it is that simple. So watch what I'm doing over here. I'm going to go ahead and now create at the app on start. I'm going to create set, and I'm going to come up with this little variable. Uh, I'm going to call it as set. Uh, let's call this as 
uh, refresh var, and I'll call that starting as false. So when the app on start comes, um, it'll go ahead and create it as uh, false. And if I should spell it correctly, that it is false. So I'm just going to go ahead and do an app, right click, run on start, and we've got a value for that data set. Now, so watch, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to do a Power BI refresh, and I'm going to put this as set the refresh bar, bar, comma, and when I click on it, I'm going to set that as true, comma. This is very similar to what we also use, you know, if you want to go ahead and do the pop-ups and uh, for when you have a, a pop-up ones, which I do on all my videos, same concept, apply a uh, formula over there. So now I've gone ahead and done this, all right? Next, what I also have to do is I'm going to go ahead and click on this was the actual visual. So click on the visual, and here is the magic. This is, I mean, if you haven't, you know, heard of anything I've said, this is what you do. You go now to the reset function over here and change the fall and put in this if command. So refresh var. If it equals true, go ahead and change that to false. Otherwise, just change it back to true. So simple. Nothing, no, no magical, no major formulas, no if, blah, 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 subsets. But see, moment I did that, it is now forcing it to do a refresh. But what exactly is the refresh doing? And is it, is it kind of you know working? Well, let's let's do a solid test. Let it, let it finish its first refresh over here, and voila, it already went ahead and updated the first thing. But let's let's do a solid test, all right? In fact, I will go ahead and now give me another score. So I said I did the uh, math one. Let me go ahead and put an English. So I'll see English, and I'm going to score a 99, and I'll save that as a save. Now, when I hit the save, you see how the graph, I mean, the, uh, the tile is actually refreshing. And watch, it goes ahead and refreshes it because I'm forcing that reset to refresh, and immediately you will see the updated data coming in over here. And again, the performance is not to do with the app. It could be the internet speed, me sharing my screen, all the other jazz which is going on. But watch this. It happened directly over here. So let's, you know, like I said, it, I was able to do it on the uh, create. What I want to do is I want to kind of do something similar on the uh, refresh as well. So I'm going to come back over here. I'm just going to go grab that. I'll come back and do it on the edit as well. And I'll just do something like this. That should work. So if I hit play, and let me go ahead and now take out Shane. It is deleted. After it is deleted, the refresh is happening over there, and once the refresh completes, it will go ahead and give you the updated data. So basically, it's not just for adding, it's not just for deleting, or not just for adding and forgets about it. It takes care of the entire CRUD operation, uh, operations, create, read, update, and delete over there. It takes care of all of those. So just as a quick recap, the feature is available. It is in preview. Depending on how you do it, every once in a while you might get this bug. This is something that I have reported. So again, it's in you know, it's in preview. So definitely go play around with it. Um, in my side, I get one of these errors. You may or may not get it, but it still works. Because remember, with the error, I was able to still go ahead and do a test. It still works. Uh, but that's not the point. The point is this one over here. It is a connector now. So no longer do you see that Power BI integration because it's coming from Power BI. You don't see that. I'm not using a flow to go and do that. I'm just doing it directly in Power BI I and mean Power Apps over here using the connector with two very important things. I'm using a Power BI, Power BI dot refresh data set function over there, directly the data set. But then even after the data set, I got to come up with this little trick to reset the visual. And the reset of visual is a use of a very simple formula, which is basically I'm just saying, Whatever was the value of this set variable, just go ahead and change it. And that chain automatically forces that Power BI to go ahead and update that. And that was actually the magic. It is so simple, but thanks to this new feature that is available and a little bit of trick involved over there, you now have a full fidelity functionality of doing a Power BI report or a tile directly into your Power Apps OER, and it works, keeping in mind that your data source has direct query. Thomas, uh, I went ahead and set the foundation over here for a whole bunch of uh, Power BI. You know, I took from what uh, Charles has uh, shared over here, but as we know, somewhere in this, there has to be teams involved. So well, hang on. Before you go on, there's been a couple <laughs> questions. Hey, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna interject here for a second. Um, okay. So this query that Daniel's using is actually going back to Dataverse, which actually goes back through a duet query, and he had actually enabled this in his environment. 
Can you go out and show, you and show those people the TDS um, endpoint yeah. that you enabled? So yep. what that means, folks, is that a direct query does not have a number of refreshes uh, available to you. It's, it's not using the gateway, which actually isn't limited to A or 48, depending on if you're premium or shared. So you can actually go out and hit the refresh button on the day set, like what Jesse was saying, as much as you want. Matter of fact, in the docs I sent Daniel, I think it's actually set to, was it five minutes or 15 by default? It's the five minutes, but it's for the direct tile in the Power BI. So if you okay, go right. ahead and okay, create so. a dashboard, if you create the dashboard over there, it'll, it'll refresh every five minutes. But over here, directly in your app, it will refresh as often as you use that data, uh, data refresh function over there. Right. I, I guess the point was is people were saying, hey, using this refresh may cost you money. For a direct query data set, it will not. And the reason not. being is you're not actually impugning on those number of refreshes. It's, that's not a limitation. That's using import in the gateway. So what yeah. Daniel's going to here is he's going into the admin center. He's going into his environment. And he's going to show you that, that toggle that enabled him to use a direct query data set from his Dataverse environment. So here it is. Yeah, two, two things also. The database version has to be greater than 9.2.1. So that's that's the first requirement over there. Go ahead and confirm that. And then the next thing is go to your set settings. And in your settings, you go to products, go to features. And in your features, you got to toggle this as on. TDS, tabular data stream, you want to toggle that as on. That's the key requirements. Your da uh, server, database server it needs to be higher than that number. And then you also need to go ahead and turn this on. That's perfect. I don't know that I missed any other questions. David or Sancho, did you, is there any? I think Jesse's actually got most of them. And Christina's been answering. No, I think that's it. So now I'm going to let you actually do your segue back into what's the next logical step for Thomas, Daniel. Well, you know, I, was... I just might have one, one question. Does this require a premium license for every user who is displaying the application? So this way of embedding Power BI, because I remember that embedding Power BI you know, previously required actually the premium license or uh, pro license for Power BI, premium license yeah, for organization. Correct. How it's like? So it's it's still the same. If you're going to use Power BI, uh, if you're going to embed the Power uh, BI tile into Power Apps, then you have to have the Power BI Pro. Uh, it it won't. If you don't have Power BI Pro, you're not going to get any errors or it won't break. You just won't see that tile over mm -hmm. there. So you just sure. need you need the Power BI Pro for all just of to, this. Just to share stuff. it, yeah. Just to share do the sharing. It. So one thing Daniel showed is that he did it in his local workspace. Please do, don't do that. That was for a demo in this case. In general, you'd want to use a normal workspace. That way you could share it. And then it actually answers Thomas's question is that in order to share a Power BI report or dashboard, you share the workspace. And that's actually requires a license to do that. So yeah. That's a good call out. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Chuck.